So this is my first video back since back since grammar words speaking to cam the camera. Hey y'all, hi. Hi, this is my first video posting since my two month maternity leave. Wow, and we're coming in strong with new makeup hot takes, the video in which I give my opinion about new makeup releases. And there's a lot to talk about because we have a two month backlog. So this is the first video that I'm posting, but it's actually not the first video that I filmed. Yesterday I filmed like a rambly, maybe kind of mumbly PR unboxing, kind of just to clear out the pipes and remind myself what it's like to do this. So you have that to dubiously look forward to. That'll be coming sometime this week. It might be kind of a mess. And I did ramble a little bit in that video about what it feels like to be getting back to work. But what I didn't do in that video, I realized after I filmed it, was the most important thing, which is to give a huge heartfelt thank you to those of you who watched our maternity leave content and commented on it. As some of you have noticed, because I've seen it in your comments, comments, some of the videos performed unexpectedly well, like beyond our wildest dreams. And we are so relieved, Joe and I, that we managed to carve out a real parental leave for ourselves in this system that makes no provision for it, and that the channel survived and actually even kind of thrived. Everyone who watched and commented played a part in that, and seriously, you have our eternal gratitude. And then briefly, for those of you who are wondering, the birth went well and we're all doing well. Obviously, there's more to it than that, but this video is about new makeup hot takes, and I'm eager to get into that content. I'll be sharing more about the birth in an upcoming Patreon video, so if that's something that you're curious about, then check out my Patreon account. I'll link that down below. And I'll try to fit a what's cheering me up right now into the schedule soon for more lifestyle content. But I did want to assure you in broad strokes that I'm healthy, the baby's healthy, and we're all doing well. And now, let's go Go ahead and get into the meat of the video. New makeup, hot takes, new makeup, hot takes. So on my face today, this glowy gorgeousness is a full face of Merit Beauty. And Merit is sponsoring me to tell you about it here at the beginning of this video, which is so exciting because if you've been watching me probably for any length of time, then you know, you know that I am a super fan of this brand. Let me tell you why. A lot of reasons. The aesthetic is, in my opinion, perfectly on point. The packaging has that understated glamour. It manages to be minimal without being boring. And I feel like the formulas kind of follow suit with that theme of understated glamour. Everything is blendable and buildable so you can tailor your look, basically turning the makeup intensity dial up or down depending on the occasion. And as someone who loves makeup and loves aesthetic drama, but wants a natural look much of the time. I really appreciate the versatility of these formulas. And as someone who's acne prone, I really appreciate the ingredients are carefully chosen and never clog my pores. But most of all, the tones and the undertones of the color cosmetics are what get me. The colors are impeccable. I'm so picky about color. And Merit always nails it with rich, interesting, sophisticated, special colors that are also eminently wearable. So today I wanted an overall sheer, glossy, fresh, lived-in skin look with a strong lip. So on my eyes, I'm wearing the limited edition Solo Shadow in Glacé, which is being released for the first time with Merit's Holiday Kit. The Holiday Kit also includes the Sheer Lip Liner in Bespoke, which is a new product, a clear version of the Brow Pomade, which is also limited edition, and a mini mascara and serum. I'm also wearing the Blush Balm in Fox, which has become become my go-to blush because it looks so natural. It's the only blush that I've put on my face for the past two months. And today I topped it with some of the Day Glow Highlighting Balm in Bounce for a really, really glossy finish. And I tapped some of that up onto my brow bone as well. For the lipstick, it was a toss up between Tiger and 1990. I ended up going with 1990. As many of you know, the Merit Signature Lip Lightweight Lipstick is my favorite lipstick formula of all time. To me, it has the ideal amount of pigment. It's always effortless and it always looks chic. And I absolutely
absolutely love that they have this buildable neutral brown in the shade range. I'll link the Merit site down below at the top of the description box, of course. I think the holiday kit has already launched and it's a savings of like $25 compared to buying each of the products individually. Okay, thanks Merit. What a treat to work with a brand that I have admired for so long. I have pulled everything up, but I'm not quite sure that what the order. I mean, I, I feel like some of these things, some of it's probably like two month old news. It is all mixed together because I went in to Trend Mood 1, the Instagram account, and I started going through and just being like, aha, aha, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. So bear with me timeline wise, bear with my disorganization. Speaking of which, my computer's about to die. All right, first up on my list, although who knows how new this news is, NARS Holiday Palette. I almost didn't talk about it, but it, the thing is still going on with me where it's like, will she, won't she with NARS? And what it is is like, will she, won't she even want it? Like, will it, won't it even pluck her heartstrings? Because I'm always looking for a reason not to buy something, you know? I and mean, in this video, that's often what I'm doing. I'm like, let's come up with a reason why we don't need all of this makeup. I've been up to and all around town with NARS. I used to, and I say this, I'll breeze through it if I can, because I say this every time they talk about NARS and new makeup hot takes. I used to be a real NARS girl. I was really into NARS. To me, they were like the pinnacle. Like NARS was the dream brand and a NARS item was like the best of the best tippy top version of any type of makeup. So a NARS face palette to me was like the best blush that I could imagine owning, the most beautiful piece of makeup that I could imagine owning. And I used to covet this stuff so hard hard and just owned a very few pieces of it and cherished it so much. And then over the years, I feel like NARS has lost me a little bit because the shades, which used to feel so innovative and relatively edgy in the makeup world, the tones and undertones, they've just gotten bland. It's like the pinks have gotten brighter and more mid-toned and more regular. Everything seems to be orgasm, which is kind of like that mid-toned peach. The shades have just gotten less shaded, less shady. The shades have gotten less less nuanced, less sophisticated, and they're just losing me. And when I saw this, oh, but then the rest of the story, I did a video after much ado, after hemming and hawing for like a year and a half, revisiting NARS. I purchased like a full face of makeup and I did a full video reviewing it all. I will link that down below. The verdict, if I remember correctly at this moment, was that the formulas are really great and that I actually am still a NARS customer, target customer when it comes to the formulas. It's like they really know what they're doing and who they're trying to make makeup for with the formulas, but there's just somebody uncreative at the wheel when it comes to colors. That was the result of my very recent exploration, re-exploration of NARS. So I just feel like I've given them a little bit more of an inch. I've given them a little more room to get in amongst me with the new releases because I have an, a renewed appreciation for the brand. And when I saw this, now we're actually starting the hot take. Are you still here? First day back, okay? I mean, almost. Second day back. So maybe we can all cut me some slack, including me. When I first saw this, I was like, oh, NARS, I kind of re-like you. The new me re-NARS, like the me who has a renewed appreciation, kind of mixed with the very old me whose heartstrings would have been plucked by a thing like this. And together we were like, ha, 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 you know? And then I took a look at the colors. I think it might partly be just, well, this looks all Photoshopped. It might partly be that there are some, what look like browns, in here when you look at the palette. There, it looks like there's a brown and a tan and the pink looks kind of slightly pastel -y, which I like, and so does the peach. But then the more I look at it and when I scroll through and look at the swatches, I don't think that NARS is departing from their current mission to have all the colors be boring and have all the browns lean orange, basically. When I really look at it, I don't think they are. So I'm just letting it go. And I feel like this is actually a good opener because even though I rambled a lot about my history with NARS. This is a good example of something where I wanted to want it. That's what always happens with NARS. It's like I had this feeling like that old magic spark, that holiday palette excitement. It could be there if I worked at it. Like I could work that up for myself if I kept trying and then maybe I would end up spending the $60 and getting this palette and I would have that thrill. But instead, I took a moment, I looked at it realistically and the bubble popped and the desire died and I just kind of like got off of that path. And it's exciting. 
exciting. Like when I find new makeups that I really am excited about or makeup that I really do love, it's exciting to want it and then to get it and then to use it and have it be amazing. If it realistically is the thing for me, you know? But in this case, it's just not. It's the fantasy that calls to me and not the reality. Okay, this, I know that it's been a while. Yeah, September 10th. So this was like, this launched, this was probably announced even as I was giving birth and it launched right after I went on leave. So I kind of am crowdsourcing information from you about this Rose Ink foundation. So famously, the Rose Ink Concealer in the lightest shade LX101 is a perfect match for my very neutral, pale olive skin. Rare to find. For years, I have clung to it as the shade match, and I've publicly declared it to be the shade match, and it still is. I don't know why I'm making it sound like it's not anymore. It still is the shade match for me. And now, Rose Ink is coming out with a foundation, and that's exciting because you would think that they would also make one for people with my exact complexion. You would think that they would make sure that there's a foundation for the people who have been using that concealer. But looking at the pictures, I don't know. I don't know. The lightest one, 1C, is a cool toned, a pale cool toned shade. That's not the same as the lightest shade in the concealer. That's not what they did with the concealer range. In the concealer range, the very palest shade is very, very neutral and kind of has that gray tint. And in this range, if I didn't know better, like if it wasn't rose ink and I didn't have history with the brand and that really great history with that one complexion product, I would look at this and kind of write it off because I would be like, 1C, the palest one, is rose colored, it's too pink for me. 2N, which is the palest neutral one, looks a little bit maybe maybe um, golden, you know what I mean? And then 3N looks very peach. So it has that striation of pink, yellow, orange that the lightest three shades often have. It kind of looks like it has that. And it seems like maybe 2N, the second lightest shade, would be the one that they pitched towards people who are using the lightest concealer. I just don't feel confident based on these pictures that it is that color, that they didn't just slip into the trap. Actually, so scrolling through, it says 2N fair with neutral olive undertone. It says it. It's just my eyes. My eyes are not convinced. So if you are in my shoes and you have gotten ahead of me because you haven't been on maternity leave for the past two months and you've tried this or even swatched it or seen it in store or something, is it a match for the concealer? Should I try it? Should I review it? Should I even continue thinking about it? Tell me what you know. Okay, next up, I have to react to the Pat McGrath holiday collection because it's Pat McGrath and it's exciting. I couldn't talk about absolutely everything. It's probably going to be a pretty long video anyway, but I had to just pick the top of the top, you know, and I have to include Pat McGrath. It's like kind of the collection we've all been waiting for every holiday. It's like what we're all curious about. And so what I have is this reel that's like, it's a little video. It's showing all of the different things popping up. So I'm watching it go by and I'm able to give you my overall impression. And you know what it is. It's like the packaging isn't as luxe, but there are way more options and things are sort of packaged together so that you can get more for your buck, more bang for your buck because you're buying the holiday collection compared to regular Pat McGrath palettes and collections. Some people feel as though the holiday collection formulas are also different. It's not just the packaging, but also that the formulas aren't up to snuff. And she rarely, if ever, puts any of those really incredible baked special shades in these. So that's the overall picture of the thing. And it looks like she hasn't departed from that shape for the holiday collection this year. So all of that as a given, right? I'm not going to even really address that. Although if you're looking for a reason not to buy that, what I just said, like what Pat McGrath holiday is might be a reason. Because I actually do think, thinking about that and looking at all this, personally, I'd kind of rather have a mothership. I'd rather just skip this, just turn a blind eye to it and save for a mothership palette and know that it's going to be the best and the specialist and the most luxe and the most perfected of her formulas, just to be absolutely sure. Last year, I did buy one of the little five pan palettes from the holiday collection, and I do really like it. But a year later, it's still my mothership palettes from Pat McGrath that excite me the most and that stand out the most. They really have stood the test of time in my affections in a way that that little cardboard palette hasn't, even though I really, really loved it and used it a lot after I purchased it. And I did feel like I had gotten my money's worth. What I'm telling you is a year later, it's the motherships for me. So if that tells you anything. So all of that aside, let's just talk about the concept and the colors. I like this pop of pastel green, this like mint. One of the bigger palettes has these two past, these like mint shades. I like that as like an avant-garde holiday. They're just little things. Like one of the five pans has cranberry glitter in it. That's a really exciting, slightly less trodden 
Asian holiday path. Same with the mint. I like these like blushes included in the palette. Again, I'm not playing to buy them, but it's just, it's nice. Like everything looks really pretty and I feel like is walking that line between the excitement of something that's dedicated holiday and that has holiday qualities and vibes and freshness, newness, avoiding cliche. You know what I mean? Like it's managing to do all of that. Some of it's boring. Some of the, the face palette, I can't tell if there's one or three. I think there are three. Yeah, there are three. The face palettes look a little bit boring to me, although maybe it would be very useful for somebody. The colorful mascara is kind of an out there choice. I'm not mad at it, but it, it's not what's making me say that this looks good to me. It's like the colors in the palettes that have eyeshadows in them and the way that those are conceived of. I just think it looks good. It's eye candy, but I love that it's eye candy where I can be like, wow, wow, nice work, Pat McGrath. No interest, not buying it. It's the best kind. Okay, I'm just going to touch on this quickly because I have kind of a shallow, actually a true hot take rather than like a five paragraph essay like I've been giving on everything else. Kind of a shallow reaction. Harry Styles make, or no, fragrance, not makeup. Let me tell you something. I am not really up on pop I am not really following the people, the famous, the scandals, the People magazine. I don't know. I don't know from people. So I only know really what Harry Styles looks like and what his vibe is because of doing new makeup hot takes. Like every time he launches a thing and he puts out some sort of picture of himself. And th that's my entire context for Harry Styles. So really it's probably just like the marketing for pleasing his formerly just nail polish brand or maybe like some sort of body care. I can't remember. Maybe not. But I am kind of in the, just within this very narrow context, I am kind of picking up what he's putting down in terms of his vibe, right? I like what he's doing out there, I think, because again, I don't have all of the context. I just have this. But I see this picture of Harry and I'm like, okay, I can, I can get behind this. Carry on. Carry on, Harry Styles. Carry on. It's kind of how I feel. And then my comment on the launch, this was just a, this was just a preview, a pre-announcement about him coming out with fragrance. And these are the three fragrances. Close Closeness, like that's the name of the fragrance. Bright, comma, hot. The use of the comma though, Harry, I mean, that is, it's just very literary. Bright, hot. It's not bright, hot, which I feel like is what most people would do. The fragrance is called bright, hot, bright, hot. That's the name of the fragrance. And then, as if that weren't enough, the third fragrance is called Rivulets. Rivulets. This, to me, is very creative. Does this have something to do with his music? Is there, am I missing something? Like, if these are references to his song titles, then that would kind of make sense how they got so creative or so sort of off the beaten path. If they're derived from something, then they kind of carry that strangeness with them. That's fine. But that would be a little less impressive. If that's not the case, and he just, he or somebody on his team just came up with these names, like, one's going to be called closeness, one's going to be called bright, hot, and one's going to be called rivulets. Like those are the three scents we've created. That's art. That's like artistic. And I'm kind of here for it. Am I going to smell the smells? Probably not. Buy them? No. I just am here to appreciate. Okay, briefly, the Rode lip launch, Rode's first foray into color cosmetics. I totally missed it after saying in the last new makeup hot takes that I've just kind of been waiting for Hailey Bieber to do something with color in it so that it would make sense for me to review it or be interested in it. Now it's been like a hundred years now since this actually launched. Have we all forgotten about it already? Was it a blip in the pan? I sort of feel like that. Now I'm looking at it, I'm like, am I going to go back and dredge up excitement over the road? Peptide lip tint months later? Probably not. But let me know if you want me to. This has excited me of its own accord. Patrick Ta multi-dimensional eye topper. This just gives me old school makeup YouTube vibes and also kind of old school Hannah makeup vibes. This is the exact kind of thing that back before YouTube when I was just a little little tango dancer making up her face every night to go out dancing, not really knowing anything from anything, never had heard of Jaclyn Hill, you know what I mean? Like way back in the day, I would find myself buying, I would like buy a thing like this, like one thing like this and use it up. You know, like I would get this and I would have it and I would put it on my inner corner and on my lids every night for dancing for like months and use it up and then it would be gone and I would be like, I need something else to, you know, it's like, this gives me like Stila glitter and glow vibes in terms of, I don't know what it is because it's just this little square container full of glitter. <laughs> Like, it's just a little sifter. Maybe it's the photography, what the beauty news girls used to call the potato photography, and I never even knew what that meant. In my mind, it was like the picture was taken with a potato, but I really don't know what it's supposed to mean when they would always call it that. These, like, bad product shots. I mean, not product shots, but, but photos that someone would get before the product shots had launched. The potato imagery of this sparkly thing, it just, I want it. I want it, and I am likely to just get it because it's just, 
just one little thing because I'm minimalist now and I try not to, you know, just jump at every single thing that launches and buy it, but I try to be discerning, right? I try to just buy things I'm really going to love and I try not to have my life overflowing with stuff, especially not stuff that I buy. This is how I feel. When I see a thing like this, it gives me those feelings and here's the little rundown in my my mind. I'm like, it's not very big, so it's not going to take up a huge amount of space. I have a little collection of this type of thing that's pretty small. It'll fit right in with them. I feel like I'll use it a lot because this is the kind of thing that I'm always just relishing enhancing my look with. I would even put this on my cheeks. I'm not above a little bit of glitter. I could just see it giving me a lot of joy and not languishing and it's just one, like just one little thing. I don't know the price. Because it's one little thing, I assume it's luxury pricing because it's Patrick Ta, but I assume it's not like $50. It's not like Tom Ford pricing, you know, maybe $25 or something like that. It sort of checks all my boxes for a little holiday joy for myself. Now I'm saying all this and I might just forget about it and not buy it ever. And that would be fine too. But that's my hot take actually. A rare, oh no. I was about to say a rare positive hot take that where the takeaway is just like, I kind of want it and I might buy it, which is rare in my defense, but I have the same take for the next thing. Although I don't think I will actually buy this. The Patrick Ta, I kind of think if I go to a Sephora and I see it, I might just be like, ooh, tee hee this is the thing. This is the one thing that I was like, oh, I'm going to get it. And I might do it. This, the Urban Decay Moon Dust Palette, the way that I feel about it is this. Bravo, Urban Decay. Well done. Touche. You finally did something that makes sense. This is what we've all been asking for. It's like, who asked for this? All of us. This is what we've been wanting. It's not naked. It's a throwback without being naked. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's already sold out. Like, we all want this. This is Urban Decay's best formula. The Moon Dust, it's so good for beautifully calibrated, beautifully judged shades in this. One of which is Space Cowboy, which is probably the best thing that they've ever made. I have it in a single. I was wearing it actually when I filmed yesterday, the chaotic PR unboxing. I was wearing it on top of the Chantikai giraffe on my eyes. So first day back getting made up yesterday. And what did I do? I reached for Urban Decay Space Cowboy. So Space Cowboy's in here along with Star Cowgirl, which looks equally beautiful and is sort of a champagne-y white and cosmic space dust, which looks like it is, oh, there are two of them. There are two different ones. Okay, so the one that I'm looking at is the Space Cowboy Moon Dust Palette. That looks great to me. The other one is just the pink's too pink, the yellow, the orange is too orange, and the other two look boring. But the other, this one that I've been talking about, maybe I will buy it. It's so good. There's like a dirty, taupey brown version of the Moon Dust Shadow. The formula is just very shiny. It's really wet look, really beautiful. And to have four of them in a little palette and to have the colors be so good. I don't really need this because I love this kind of thing so much. So this is actually another really good tool for resisting the urge to buy if that's one of the things that you're here for. Just this sentence. I don't really need this because I love this kind of thing so much. So that means that I have this kind of thing, right? I have the single of Space Cowboy. I can just use that for anything that I would use any of these for. This is the kind of thing I tend to collect, the kind of thing I tend to keep through declutters. If I bought it, it would just be me indulging further in the love of a thing that I already have a lot of, which is fine. Again, if I wanted to spend some of my budget that way and it wasn't going to stress my budget and it wasn't going to make me feel like I have way too much and I can't keep track of everything. If it's in its place, the way that I was talking about the Patrick Ta being, it's fine. It's just, if looking for a reason not to buy, for me, that's the reason. It's like, I don't need this because I love this kind of thing so much and I have plenty of it. But it does tempt me, which is really saying something coming from Urban Decay. And honestly, I feel similarly about the Danessa Myricks Lightworks palette. I just wanted to touch on this briefly because Danessa Myricks is so great. It's just such a great presence and artist. I love the brand and it's so exciting for people when these Lightworks palettes come out. For me, I love like the texture and the creaminess and the quality is all right up my alley. The extremely multicolored, rich colored palette. That's the reason that I don't need this for me. The thing I liked about the more neutral of the two moon dust quads from Urban Decay was that it was so neutral in color. And if Danessa Myricks would release a light work palette like this, where it's all like shades of bronze and gold and champagne and also deep grungy colors like grungy olive and charcoal and like shimmery black and stuff like that, I would be all over that. But this is all about color and I don't need it at this level, like this volume right now. Speaking of color, Natasha Denona mini trichrome palette, the blue, the Eve Clen blue on the end. It's so intense. Is that what this really looks like in person? I wonder, actually look that up really quick. Honestly, it looks great. And I don't need 
blue, like Eve Clen blue in an eyeshadow. Like that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You can keep it. I'm not saying it looks great for me. Although now that I've looked it up and I'm seeing the looks that people have done, I just know I've been there, right? I've done really elaborate blue, rich, deep blue eye looks in the past. They are fun while they lasted, but it's not what I want to be doing now. And it's just not the most flattering with my coloring. So that's what I'll be clinging to, right? But that aside, like the fact that it's not for me aside, I think this is fantastic. It's just beautiful. Such a full-on delivery. Like, there's no weak sauce in this palette, I feel. And I sometimes feel that way about Natasha Denona's little five pans. It's just, like, mm, sort of throwaway. People, like, get them to collect. But this, oh my gosh, some of this imagery is beyond. Like, imagery from the brand of the eye looks. And I know that for some people that rich, glowy matte blue is just gonna be like what you've been waiting for your whole life. So once again, I love it when I can say, this gives me all the feelings, but it's not gonna cost me anything. <laughs> I'm not gonna acquire anything new. Feeling the feelings is free. Okay, here's something in which I'm lightly maybe interested. Revlon has released a tint serum. Usually this is the kind of thing I just skip right over because the lightest shades are usually that stripe of pink, yellow, and peach, and none, none of that will work on me, right? It's just, it's like painting pink, yellow, or peach onto my face. Should I use a thing like that? Especially the drugstore, that's usually the case. The thing that's interesting is that it's not just the lightest shades. It looks like the lightest shades might be a little bit on the dark side for me, but whatever. It's like, the, it's often the case with shade ranges of complexion products that there isn't a shade for me. But looking at the shade range of this, the colors look a lot more nuanced, more neutral all across the shade range from the lightest to the darkest. They they just look more realistic. They have that sort of neutrality that a lot of people's real skin actually has. Instead of looking all pink and yellow and peach all over the place, which so many shade ranges. So often when you, you see like the um, complexion swatches on the model's arms and none of the swatches actually match the model's arms. They're all like too brightly pigmented in one direction or another for the actual skin of any of the models. I feel like we see that a lot in beauty. In this case, the swatch photo just looks really impressive. Like all of them look really neutral and natural and are blending into the model's skin tones. And I, so I, I kind of just wanted to call that out, even though I think it doesn't go, there needs to be like a lighter arm for them to have a shade that would actually work for me. When I saw that, I, I was like, oh, I have hope. I have hope for the beauty industry because it just, it looks great. And the blushes look kind of pretty too. I probably won't end up looking into this, but I wanted to bring it up because I have been a vociferous critic of the lack of neutrality in shade range is something that I've talked about a lot. So seeing a very neutral looking shade range, I just needed to talk about it. Desaturated, that's the word. The shades, pretty much across the board, they look desaturated. Speaking of desaturation, Natasha Denona has finally released the full-size Xenon palette. And I can't decide how I feel because what happened was I was so excited when the I Need a Nude eyeshadow palette came out because it was like finally an actually neutral toned or kind of cool toned neutral Natasha Denona palette. I got it and reviewed it and I do really like it. I do feel like it's a palette full of go-to one and done eye looks. It's so beautiful. It's not warm toned. It's not that situation where you think you're getting something neutral and then it's like all the browns are actually orange. It's not like that. But it also doesn't have that smoky eye grittiness kind of like that actual cool quality that it could have had. And then she turns around and releases one that actually does have that. I mean, really gray. And it might be that these gray grays, these like gritty grays without the touch of warmth, or the touch of sort of taupey warmth that most of the shimmers in I Need a Nude have, it might be that they actually aren't the best for me. I, I kind of know that actually, because when something gets this charcoal, it kind of tips over into blue a little bit, or they tend to tip over into blue, and then it won't flatter me as much. So probably I have the right one. What I'm saying is that I got that one, and now I'm seeing this and I'm like, mm, maybe I should have waited. Like maybe this is the new neutral Natasha Denona palette of my dreams. But I actually think, no, I think I'm being seduced by the one slightly warm, shimmery, taupey gray in the bottom right-hand corner. That, I'm looking at that and I'm like, the shadow of my dreams. Well, guess what, Hannah? That shadow is in I Need a Nude palette in droves. And all the rest of these, they lean blue. They're like those charcoals that are gonna lean navy. 
and that actually isn't what I want. And it's true of the mattes as well, these really neutral grays that are kind of going to lean seal, seal gray, and that isn't what I want either. Boy, is it beautiful though. Okay, here we have a valid, like, should I review it moment. The Hermes eyeshadow quartets. I haven't been following. I imagine people are out here saying I can't stand that they put round and square in the same package, and then other people are out here being like, why are you so bothered by it? It's not a big deal. I store my single shadows often round and square together. When I build little magnetic palettes of my own eyeshadow palettes, my own color stories, I will often put round and square together and they end up looking just like this. So I've come around to this. A long time ago I came around and I came to kind of like it and feel like there's something artistic about it. it kind of looks like a modern painting in a gallery, you know, it's really what Hermes is going for here. And I like it. I don't mind at all that two are square and two are round. And then it's Hermes and it comes in the orange box and one of them, the one in the all the way bottom right hand corner, those are those neutrals that get me every time. And I just love the idea of a neutral quad that's Hermes, that's this luxury, that's this interesting that I can use just to pop on an eyeshadow look. But that's only true if the packaging feels really luxe and if the formulas are really good. And there's only one way to find that out. Actually, I guess there's another way, which would be to watch someone else's <laughs> review. I could just do that. The product shots look pretty. The models look pretty, very polished, very Hermes. The model collage featuring the quad that I like is very pretty, kind of Terry Barber, that like shimmery burnt toast eyeshadow that I like, shiny burnt toast. If there is a hue and cry for me to review this, then I will begin to maybe consider it. And until then, I'm just admiring. Oh my gosh, it's $108. One of them is $108? How? Why? I saw that and I had a moment where I was like, I'm definitely definitely not going to be buying this. And then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, maybe that's more of a reason to review it, to be like $108. Is it just entirely beyond the pale? There's only one way to find out. The last thing I'll say is that I like the one with the greens in it too. I'm seeing this, I can't call it a trend if we've just seen it from Hermes and Pat McGrath, although maybe that's enough. Maybe they're heavy hitters enough to call it a trend. But this sort of vintage green eyeshadow is a little bit avant-garde feeling for the time of year. I kind of like that. Maybe I'll build my own little eyeshadow palette out of singles to uh, experiment with that theme. I don't need to buy something in order to feel the feels of that trend, that little mini trend that might not even be a trend, just something I like. So I'm exhausted now and I just have two more left. I'm going to just knock them out. The Westman Atelier Holiday Kit, I don't even know why I pulled it up to talk about. I think it's just, I just like red. I think I just like really bright, shiny red. And I was like, ooh, it's pretty. <laughs> like they've, they've done a good job making it seem alluring. Also, there's a brown mascara in it. I like that. But it's Westman Atelier. It's going to be wildly expensive. It's just there's a lot to love here. I appreciate the choices. Let's just leave it at that. Juvia's Place Volumizing Gloss Stick. I pulled up for two reasons. One, I love a gloss stick. Like this is the kind of thing that I really love. So I looked at it and I was like, oh. And I feel like since the drugstore lip gloss lipstick search video, Juvia's Place has crept up in my estimation. I'm kind of picking up what they're putting down. And one of these basically looks taupe. And we know that Juvia's Place is capable of releasing a taupe, a truly grungy, but not too dark, like taupe gray brown lip product because they did it. One of the things I came across in that video was that, one of the lip glosses. And one of these is that, and I want to try it. As you can tell, the nuance has drained away. I'm just like, it's pretty. I want to try it. Good job. And I think that that means that the video is over. Wow, I really went from, I went from 60 to zero in a very short amount of time. I feel like I barely have it in me. I barely have it left in me to hold together an outro. And so all it occurs to me to say is just thank you again for still being here because it's been a long time. I was gone for a long time. The biggest break I've ever had to take. And it was scary. And now here we are on the other side of it. I mean, work-wise, career-wise, livelihood-wise, in this weird, unpredictable, unstable career, it was scary. And here we are on the other side of it. And I'm back and you're back and I'm still here and you're still here. And thank you so much for that. It might take me a little bit of time to really get myself together to be able to deliver the way that I used to. I'm not really sure how this is going. You know, we're not really back in the swing of things, but that process has begun. And that's all I have to say other than don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.